Well, this is very interesting. Mercedes have turned up at the Monaco Grand Prix and have abandoned their innovative front ring design that they've ran for the first seven races and have returned to a much more conventional load distribution on their new front ring for Monaco. This, of course, also comes with all the other changes that have been mentioned in all the videos and other news publications out there. So, of course, there's a brand new rear ring as well as changes to the floor and beam ring. And this is really interesting because it seems to me they finally accepted that their innovative front wing just wasn't doing what they needed it to do and it was making the balance of the W15 very difficult for both their drivers to kind of get on to grips with. Now, away from these novel changes, which we'll be getting into in a lot of detail very quickly, Mercedes also have a upgrade path for the next five race weekends, which include the Monaco Grand Prix weekend, this one, which will hopefully increase the performance of the W15 and bring them closer to the front three of Red Bull, Ferrari and McLaren. So expect to see upgrades as we can already see for Monaco, Canada, Barcelona, Austria and Silverstone. And with the trajectory that they've taken with their last upgrade package through the Imola and United States or Miami Grand Prix, they took a tenth and a half gain with regards to getting closer to their rival. So if they could keep that trajectory up with every upgrade package, that would bring them a lot closer to the overall front three leading pack. But enough of that, we will get into that a little bit later. Let's actually go over all the changes that have occurred for the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. And that obviously means we have to start with the front ring, which is a huge, huge change for any Formula 1 car and a big one for the Mercedes W15. So, as we all know, when the Mercedes W15 rocked up in Bahrain and the pre-season tests, they had a really innovative front ring in which the top element of it, the fourth element, had a huge cutout. And it was legally accepted because of that kind of very thin wire that went to the, the nose of the W15. And this was all with regards to creating that wire to 50 vortex that had been gotten rid of with these new set of regulations from 2022. Uh, this, as we've now found out, has caused a huge imbalance issue between the front and rear of the W15 that both drivers, but particularly Lewis, have spoken about at large. And so finally for the Monaco weekend, they've gotten rid of this innovation and they've gone to a much more traditional and conventional load distribution where they've actually completely gone back to what every other car up and down the grid have got, which is a full length of the top top element of their front wing. Now this of course will just mean a much more conventional load distribution, but of course it now will change the aero when it now goes towards the back end and through the rest of the W15. So this should obviously help create a stable balance now throughout every kind of phase of a corner. So the Corner entry, mid corner and corner exit should have a very, very stable platform for the car. And of course, further back, there's slight alterations to the floor of the W15. Now, these are a little bit harder to actually spot because obviously after their huge upgrade to the floor across the Miami and Imola Grand Prix weekends, there was a very noticeable change with the floor edges and how they've increased the amount of like, strakes that they have on that floor edge. This isn't necessarily something that is going to be very easy to see, but I will explain what it is. So it's all about where the cis fairing, the lower cis fairing on the floor kind of comes out. They've increased the local inboard floor volume, which of course increases the local flow acceleration in this area, which in turn generates more load for the car. So it's a very small, subtle change to see to the naked eye if you don't know where to look but it should help to increase the overall load for the floor as well, which is of course what they're looking to achieve. And now we come to the rear ring and beam ring on the W15, which again, as I've mentioned, with this being the Monaco Grand Prix weekend, it's all about increasing the downforce and the load that the W15 is producing because it needs the maximum amount that it can for the streets of Monaco. And for that, with the rear ring, Mercedes have increased the camber of the wing elements, which of course increased the local downforce and drag. 
and it's a ring specific to the Monaco racetrack. And again, the same can be said of the beam ring. Again, they've increased the camber of the beam ring elements and this increases the local downforce and drag for this area. So it seems to me that the team just want to maybe get a very, very, very stable platform and balance between the car and just increase all the drag profile and just to see where they can get for this weekend. It's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out, how quick the team are, how they can get on top of all these upgrades that they've bought and just how the balance of the W15 is throughout this racetrack because this is a track where you need the most confidence out of a driver on any of the weekends throughout a Formula 1 calendar. If you're not comfortable in your respective car around the streets of Monaco, you're not going to be able to push, you're not going to be able to get as close to the walls as you need to be to get that last couple percent, last couple half a tenth out of your car in the qualifying session to be able to put it as high up the grid as possible. Because as we all know, emphasis is very much placed on Saturday in which wherever you qualify on a Saturday, pretty much determines your race finishing position on a Sunday. That obviously excludes some variables with a lucky safety car timing, a torrential downpour, or kind of pit stop um, issues for your rivals, which could enable you to go up a couple of spots in the, the pecking order. So it's really important the drivers get very comfortable in their car for this weekend. But yeah, so now we can turn our attention away from the Monaco Grand Prix weekend and let's now talk about the upgrade plan that the Mercedes team have for the next five races. Now, as I mentioned, this is of course Monaco, Canada, Barcelona, Austria and Silverstone and they're going to have upgrades for every single one of these races and this says a lot about where the team currently are. For me, it means they've finally gotten correlation from the you know from the wind tunnel on the CFD to the real world and they you know obviously said that's been the case with their last upgrade and I think they're now no longer as they've mentioned looking for that silver magic bullet that sends them you know really fast forward getting them close to the front three as possible they're now looking to bring incremental upgrades that you know might bring a tenth half a tenth a tenth and a half you know, each upgrade package that they do bring. And of course, as a whole, over the five race weekends, if you can bring a tenth or a tenth and a half to each um, race weekend, that is a considerable amount of lap time by the time you get to Silverstone. That can be between half a second uh, lap time advantage or lap time gain, I should say, or it could be somewhere towards the 8th to 9th, 10th mark. So it's really interesting to see what they're going to be upgrading, how this is going to increase the performance, and whether they can keep up that trajectory of at least bringing a 10th to every racetrack that they come to as we head towards Silverstone. And as we all seem to see when it comes to Silverstone, their cars, no matter how bad they are at most other circuits, it has a performance increase around that track and if the car is a lot more competitive when we rock up there then that bodes very well for them and just for the general entertainment that we would have at the front so i think we could maybe get four teams at the front vying for all the podium spots and of course race victories given you know outside of the variables like which car runs better with which tyre set, all of those sorts of things. So it's really interesting to see how it's all going to play out across the next five races, starting with this weekend's Monaco Grand Prix. But yeah, guys, that's the video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like, comment down below anything you would like, and I'll catch you all in another Formula 1 video soon.